Hey guys, I am Red Herring, and it's time for another StarCraft 2 cast. And I am very excited because spawning in the bottom left position of Taldrim Altar is MX or N N M X N O X N. So I don't know how to pronounce this, but this guy, this guy is 16th in the Grand Ma in in Grandmaster League in North America. So uh, he is spawning as pink. Pink Zerg, so uh, not a ladder, not a ladder game. I'm not that good, <laughs> but uh, I was able to play him in an online tournament. Hence the chat. He's just saying apparently he's like in the middle of something. So if he was to pause and then not come back for a certain amount of time, I was to request the forfeit win. That ended up not happening. So don't worry, guys. You will be experiencing the full game here. But um, yes. This guy is insanely good. He is one of the best players I have ever played. I have played some really good players. I've played, uh, I played the little one. Believe it or not, I have played the little one, and I have played, um, uh, what is his name? McKenjin, like uh, Check Six McKenjin, I believe is his, is his clan. I I'm actually not sure, but I did play him both of those players back in season one. Um, uh, and I've just ran across like, you know, miscellaneous pros during tournaments and such. But this guy's definitely one of the top people I have played. Um, and that is basically the main reason I am casting this, honestly. I thought it was a game where I did <laughs> okay. And well, you'll see you'll see what I mean. You will see what I mean. So right off the bat, I ended up sending a scout over here and a scout down here. And this is basically purely because I was afraid he was going to six pull. Like, this was a best of one in the tournament. It was like, um, I had won the uh, the match against the opponent before this, but this was just like the next round. So like a round of like 200 something or whatever. Still a best of one. So um, nowhere close to the finals. And I was like, okay, I mean, he's Grandmaster. He's like top 20 Grandmaster. So he might six pull and just like end the game super quick uh, against this nobody player named Red Herring. So I was like, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna send out two probe scouts. But I did scout. He is not, in fact, going any cheese at all. He is going for super standard pool, and then he's getting his hatch, pumping out his zerglings. Um, I didn't even block the, the natural. Probably could have done that. But notice the wall in. I actually didn't wall in. <laughs> Still, I didn't wall in the, the, the natural. Um, choke at all, and I walled in the main because I thought he was gonna like rush. I honestly thought he was gonna rush. I mean, it's Taldrim Alter, it's a really good circuit player against a uh, not so good Frost player. I thought he was gonna like 10 pool, 6 pool, 8 pool, 11 pool, anything like that. But he's not. In fact, he's getting a lot of links and he's going for the rocks at his third, so he's gonna be taking those down. If you look at the income tab, 16 to 19 harvesters, I am getting my my nexus but notice it is delayed because i did get the second pylon i got this cannon and then i believe i put down oh no no i got the pylon i got the nexus and then i put down the cannon and now i'm getting my gateway so my gateway is slightly delayed not major but uh it is something to take note getting one gas here and and getting uh getting the uh queen over to the natural didn't actually put down a creep tumor this is something i actually i am really curious about i guess he's timed it well enough that Oh, he's timed it so nicely. This is so good. He is so pro. So the queen pops, and <laughs> as soon as the queen pops, bam, goes the inject. And, and look at this. This hatch is going to pop, and the queen is going to have just barely enough energy to inject. And transferring workers, I mean, his his injects are spot on. Um, he's, just, he's just really good. So um, against a player of his caliber... This is my general, I mean, this is like the general thought process I have. He's really good. I am not as good. Why don't I, oh, I obviously he's, he's going to be insane in the macro game. He is going to be, I mean, he knows how to play the macro. He knows how to do long-term stuff. And if I want any chance of advancing past this guy, I am going to have to all in. Um, I'm going to have to catch him by surprise or, or come out with Dark Templar or Double Stargate or something cheesy enough that he will not um there, there's the chance that he will not be prepared for it that is the objective in this game he's going for his third base down at the six six minute mark and checking around for proxy pylons so good and he hasn't even scouted me this is so ballsy he hasn't scouted where i mean he knows i'm either here 
or over here. But he never sent a drone scout, so he's just extremely cocky, or he just knows the matchup well enough um, that he's comfortable not um, not uh, not scouting. But here comes my zealot. And he's going to probe up to the tower. Actually kills off the Zergling at the tower. So he's not alert enough to, to draw him back. Check out his APM. His APM isn't even super, super high. And I know it is early in the game. But uh, we'll see if that shoots up later on. And look what we have here. A 7 gate coming out of uh, coming out of this blue noob player, Red Herring. So yes, this is my all-in of choice. I do choose the seven gate against his uh, his play style because I had scouted the third I did send a probe over scouted here scouted here even scouted over here because I thought he might be super good and and like try to ninja a base or something but um, he is going for the fast third there I did scout that and look at the harvester tab this guy is insane macro man he's 50 out of uh, 50 harvesters to 40 still pump oh he's actually getting spores so I guess he's I guess he was worried about voids or or uh, dark templar or just as is the extra precaution against a player um, who he knows might resort to a such tactic as that. So here we go. That is not my all in. I am instead going for the seven gate. Need to make you into a warp gate. But yes, plus one attack is done. Uh, he does see coming uh, coming across the tower, clearing the tower is my force uh, and putting the pylon down here. So I am able to warp in on the top if I can get up there. But look at this, he has so many roaches already. He's pumping roaches, pumping overlords. Plus one missile attack is almost done. Um, and let's see how this engagement looks. So automatically I'm, I, I, I fall back because I know I cannot take this army until I get my next warp in. And here comes the warp in, sniping off a stalker immediately and uh, targeting the, the stalkers down as opposed to the zealots which is good but look at this this is so good this is i was really proud of this in game i actually boxed him uh boxed him his roaches with the warp in which i thought was pretty pro so i was pretty proud of myself but look at all this stuff so, so this is this is the difference this is another reason i was casting the game this is the difference between like a, a mid uh like a like a high master's protoss and a and a and a grand master like high grand master zerg there's just there's these differences um, in in how good you can cope with stress basically in these all-in situations a lower league player will will forget their injects their injects will be spotty uh, they won't uh, you know they won't rally uh, as well as they should um, and they won't think as clearly under these high pressure situations this guy look at this. This is so good. He barely has any excess energy on his queens. He has a little bit, but not that much. If this was a lower league Zerg, his injects would be like screwed. He would might have accidentally sent his queens in the fight. He wouldn't have put down spines. He wouldn't have been able to gauge uh, as 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 well as as uh, I don't even know how to say his name, but as as Noxon, I guess is maybe this is a Smurf account for some pro that I don't know, but um, he's just handling this all in so well but he is losing the battles here i have been warping in pretty decently i've been actually spending my chrono boost on my warp gates i have uh, kept the aggression piling on and if we look at the income tab i have been able to kill 13 workers now the supplies i am ahead supply units lost he is behind in units lost but he is rallying in like a pro these non-stop <laughs> non-stop uh, rallies of larva um, have really been keeping my numbers from getting to a super super high critical amount and even now he knows when to pull back he knows he's gonna have to sack his natural but look at how many guys he's rallying in he has a macro hatch down even though his main uh, his natural fell he does have his macro hatch he has his third well saturated with drones this is pretty well saturated for for having um, for for withstanding an all-in attack like this and Pressuring again. I have a lot of zealots. I have a lot of stalkers warp, uh, warping in. I did warp in two zealots here to take the uh, start taking down the rocks because I do need to prep for my third. But look at this! Look at this! This is insane. Like I, <laughs> I've been in this situation so many times. And when you kill the natural as Protoss, you usually win the game. Like with your seven gate. This is not the case here. He's actually able to repulse my attack. He's actually able to take out my whole army. So if we look at the US Lost tab, now I, well, you know, he's still behind, but 
Uh, he is ahead in supply. He is behind in harvesters, but he does have uh, his, his. He's going to be ta retaking his uh, his natural. And he does have enough harvesters that it's not critical for him to all in. Like he can macro out of this, out of this failed attack. And so good, he realizes. Oh, I'm taking my third. I'm I'm trying to kill the zerglings here, and he actually backs off, trying to micro against these uh, these these zealots, and then just backs off and goes for the kill. It goes for the natural. So I back down, uh, sandwich myself in between the cannon here. He actually just runs around because I tried to wall this off, but uh, to no avail. And then he's focusing down stalkers with the lings and focusing down zealots with the roaches. This is just so good. And I actually tried to get the close in the, uh, the warp in to, to close and cut him off. And then I actually do here, but uh, bungle it up a little bit and do have these two zealots here. So. You know, look at the income tab. This is this is kind of anybody's game. I want to say that tentatively, but just the caliber of player he is, he is going to have the advantage. Um, he, I look at his vision. He doesn't really know. He hasn't sent in an Overlord Scout, so I don't know if this, he never sends an Overlord Scout or if he just assumes I'm going to be playing a standard or he just knows that that was a 7 gate and doesn't need to confirm that or see any follow-up tech. But I do have uh, plus one, plus one, plus one. And I'm pushing out. I push out. I notice he doesn't have the tower. And because I want to feign pressure, I actually push past the tower onto the creep. Let him see um, that I did have uh, units uh, approaching. And make him build the uh, lings and, and roaches. So he's not ecoing up like he probably wants to. I'm still ahead in harvesters. He is grabbing a fourth, though. And uh, still his injects. Where's his queen? Where's his queen? His creep spread is phenomenal. Um, and, it, and uh, his injects are spot on. He has his macro hatch going, he has his natural up, and he's going in for the push. He has plus one attack on his roaches, uh, getting plus one carabus now. And uh, here we have myself. I'm getting immortals. I have my Twilight Council researching Blink. So trying to follow up my, my failed seven gate as best as I can. And so good. So good. He pushes in. He's like, oh, going to take out the cannon. Oh, I'm just going to cancel the Nexus. I have to cancel. Am I going to get the cancel? Uh, yes, I do have to cancel. And he's actually going to snipe both my Nexuses. This is the key turning point in the game, I feel. This is the part which sucks. I need to get the force fields off, but I do not get them. So he snipes both bases, and he's even able to escape. Try to cut him off with the warp in, but uh, again, a little late. He's able to circumvent that. And Roach Speed, does he have Roach Speed? I actually don't think he has Roach Speed. But uh, he does scurry away. I let him go because I'm afraid of counter attacks from his links. And this is just so good. He, a multi-pronged attack. I didn't have sentries. I didn't have the gas because I'd been spending uh, the gas on, on tech. I'd been teching up to that point. I didn't have sentries. I couldn't force field around the Nexus to keep it, which was huge. And I couldn't uh, force field the Roaches out of this. So I ended up losing both. And going in for the counter again, he's going to attack the Nexus as it's about to complete. And I'm going in, I'm like, okay, I just need to do damage here. I need to attack. He's putting spines up on the high ground, so the units are actually going to be poked as they as I run up there. But I have to cancel. I do actually cancel the Nexus, and he's killing everything here. Does his links have upgrades? Uh, just plus one, plus one armor, but killing the creep turmers. And uh, look at the harvesters. He's actually shot ahead. Despite all his aggression, his injects are just so good that he can actually uh, afford to to drone up and put on aggression at the same time and kill all my bases. So I'm putting up uh, pylons here to wall this off. I did lose the cannon there, so I need to wall this off. I put down these zealots to form a little blockade here and just in time because in comes the lings. But at the same time, I'm trying to kill this and he is destroying me. Oh, my sentry gets instantly demolished. The immortals are pounding away, but uh, he's focusing them down, like one-shotting them. I do warp in uh, guys here and force field off those links, so at least my base isn't destroyed for the third time, but um, or fourth time, I guess. But the roaches completely nullify my attack. Look at the workers killed. Uh, I have killed a lot, but uh, he does have his fourth. He does have his third all the way uh, saturated, his, his natural saturated. So 
things are looking cheery for him. Not so cheery for me. My mane is mined out. My natural is mined thin, about to mine out, and I'm super oversaturated. Uh, 68 harvesters is an advantage, but there's no point in having 68 harvesters on one base. So I try to put up the natural and again, or the third, and again it gets cancelled. Oh my gosh, this is just horrible. Um, what I could have done better, multitasking, splitting my army, but I was just afraid that if I split my army, he would be able to isolate and kill um, the little segments I had. So transferring workers, I'm like, okay, I need the long distance mine. That there's uh, yeah, there's a bird zergling, so I can't actually put down a nexus. I have to make an observer here. I actually uh, warp in a couple zealots at this pylon here to put some aggression on, so that's good. But uh, he does have mutas, and I actually see the mutas with the zealots, so I know. Oh, there's mutas on the way. And I'm like, dang it, I you know this is not good. Kill the zergling here. Uh, he's getting his his fifth base. At, uh, at this position there, and warping in stalkers because I realized he's gonna have mutas. Uh, sending his mutas here just because he realized he had revealed them. He's gonna see if he can pick off a probe or two, picks off one, I blink in there, um, and ward him away. And here comes his, his roach, his roach death blow. So I had actually split up my guys, I had my sentries and my zolts here. Zerglings were no trouble to this expansion. This is this expansion is safe from Zerglings. What is not safe is from like 20 roaches. <laughs> so my guys run in. Uh, he runs in with his with his uh, mutas at the same time. I'm like, oh, I ward off the mutas. Things are looking good. Wait, no, they're not. My whole army got killed, and I'm gonna have to cancel this again. And I don't even cancel it because I realize I'm screwed. So I say, good game, well played, good game. Good luck in the rest of the tourney, and and that's game. So, this was pretty much just to demonstrate the different skill tiers in StarCraft. Like, I'm not a bad StarCraft 2 player. Uh, I'm, I'm decent. Uh, you know, um, I, I actually recently hit top 8 in, in Master League, so I'm feeling good. But this guy is just another, another tier above where I am. His macro is insane. Any lesser player would have fallen to the 7 gate. Like, I, my 7 gate was going strong. I think I could have played it off a bit better, maybe split up some of my guys to attack his third. I did notice he did have spines up there. So I don't know exactly what I what I could have done better, but I just know the little things, the counter attacks that he was doing were just spot on. So I did come really close to winning this game, but was not able to clench it. He, uh, he was definitely the better player here. So um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Took something from this game. It's kind of fun to play pros or semi pros uh good good players on ladder because it just shows you how far you have to you have to be or have to go to play at their level um which is kind of fun it's fun to to uh you know it's fun to experience that so hope you guys enjoyed it comment rate subscribe uh, we'll have more videos out soon thanks guys